Hello everyone, welcome my pretties to the science of Assassin's Creed. One of my favorite characters is Master Templar Yuhani Olsoberg. I find his conviction and his priorities very interesting, especially when it comes to the transmedia. After finishing the anime training program and becoming part of the Inner Sanctum, he couldn't be more dedicated to the Templar Order. However, he still has the same weakness that made him join Abstergo in the first place and, unbeknownst to him, also the Templar Order, his daughter Elena. When Warren Bidik and Otso Berg met, Berg was working as a freelance mercenary to afford good care for Elena's disease, cystic fibrosis. This is what Vidik used to pressure Berg. He promised him continued treatment for that disease. So today, this video is going to be about cystic fibrosis. So, first of all, what exactly is cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is a multi-organ disease caused by the mutation of a recessive gene called cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator or CFTR gene. This mutation makes the epithelial cells that line organs to lose one protein, affecting this way the functioning of different organs such as the lungs, the pancreas, liver, and sweat ducts. This protein would normally participate in the movement of the ion chloride, among other ions, which attracts water to the cell surface. Without it, the mucus in various organs becomes very thick and sticky. Under normal conditions, this mucus would be cleared, but this is not the case with cystic fibrosis. The biggest impact of this disease is seen in the lungs, where the excessive mucus clogs the airways and traps germs, which can lead to chronic bacterial infections, inflammation, and respiratory failure. In the case of the pancreas, the buildup of mucus prevents the adequate release of digestive enzymes that participate in the breakdown of food and key nutrients so they can be absorbed by the body. This will eventually result in malnutrition and poor growth. In the liver, the thick mucus can block the bile duct, which normally carries bile, which in turn is required for the digestion. The blockage of this duct results in liver disease, which is characterized by jaundice or yellow skin and eyes due to the increase of a breakdown product of red blood cells called bilirubin. The symptoms of cystic fibrosis include but aren't limited to chronic cough and sputum production, shortness of breath, radiographic abnormalities, clubbing or enlargement of the fingertips and toes, poor growth or weight gain despite having good appetite, frequent greasy, bulky stools or difficulty with bowel movement, rectal prolapse, nasal polyps, absence of sperm in ejaculate, sod loss syndromes, cirrhosis, and pancreatic insufficiency. So what is the prevalence and survivability of people with cystic fibrosis? Well, about 70,000 people suffer currently from this disease worldwide. 30,000 of them are solely in the United States, although it's very likely that in poorer areas this disease is underdiagnosed. The median survival age in cystic fibrosis has raised since 1986 until 2016 from around 28 to 43 years, which means that half of the people will live longer than 43 years and the other half will, unfortunately, die before they reach 43 years old. This change in survivability happened thanks to the discovery and development of new treatments that help handle much better the symptoms of cystic fibrosis, especially those related to the lungs, which is the main cause of death with this disease. So what are the chances of having this disease? As mentioned before, cystic fibrosis is caused by the mutation of the CFTR gene, but since it's a recessive gene, it means that you need two copies of this mutated gene to suffer this disease. If you only have one copy, then you are considered a carrier of the disease. Two carrier people have 25% chance of having a kid with cystic fibrosis, 50% chance that the kid will be a carrier, and 25% chance the kid will not receive the mutated gene from any of the parents. If you took biology in high school, you might have seen this law of segregation of genes when you studied Mendel. So how is the diagnosis done? The diagnosis is done by performing newborn screening, which includes not only cystic fibrosis testing, but also other problems such as those related to metabolism, hemoglobin, and hormones. The range of tests done depends on the country or state where you live. For both adults and babies, a genetic test or a sweat test can be performed. It can be quite difficult since there are more than 1,700 known mutations of the CFTR gene, and most genetic tests only screen for the most common ones. This is the reason why the sweat test is the most reliable way to diagnose cystic fibrosis. As mentioned before, the sweat glands are some of the organs affected by the mutation of the CFTR gene, which means that when sweat is generated, generally the levels of chloride will be higher than in a person without this condition. This is because the protein that should be crossing the membrane of epithelial cells in the sweat glands is not there, and hence, chloride is not retained inside. So, what is the treatment for this disease? Each individual will show symptoms with more or less strength, so the treatment must be personally tailored to each patient. Overall, what can be expected is medication that clears the mucus as much as possible, anti-inflammatory medication, antibiotics to stop the bacterial infections, 
pancreatic enzyme supplements to improve the absorption of nutrients, multivitamins, and also fitness plans to improve the overall health and lung function. A very special treatment that some people can take are CFTR modulator therapies, which deal with the root of the problem, the lack of a properly functioning CFTR protein. These medications can improve the movement of ions and water through the membrane of epithelial cells, helping this way reduce the main problems caused by cystic fibrosis. Unfortunately, this medication is extremely expensive, about $300,000 per patient per year, and it only works for a very few mutations of the CFTR gene. Now back to Assassin's Creed, in the audios about Ozoberg that can be found in Assassin's Creed Rogue, Vide gives a pill to Elena after bursting into Berg's house. If I had to make a guess, I would say this pill is an improved version of the CFTR modulator that reduces or completely stops the symptoms caused by cystic fibrosis. It is, unfortunately, a treatment that Elena must continue until something better and more permanent comes along, such as gene therapy. At the end of the fate of Atlantis DLC, and before injuring him, Laila Hassan tried to tell Berg that the staff of Hermes Trismegistus could help Elena, but Berg was not particularly open to talk about his daughter with her. I'd like to finish the video by saying that a lot of this information can be found in the website of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, an NGO that supports people that suffer this disease. This foundation is present in the United States, but I'm sure that similar foundations can be found in other countries. About Johanny Otzelberg, I would absolutely love to see more content about this character. I feel like the corrupted audio file of his interrogation that can be found in Leila's computer in Assassin's Creed Valhalla doesn't make Otzelberg justice. At all. But enough ranting for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video, please let me know if you liked it, and until the next time.